Heidegger's Existential Philosophies, a brief introduction by Hannah Marr. Part 1. Individuality and the Pursuit of Possibilities Martin Heidegger, a prominent philosopher from Germany, coined the term Jemeinigkeit, which roughly translates to, in each case, mine. An easier way to define this concept would just be individuality. Now, this type of individuality isn't really a quality that a person has. It's more of a set of possibilities that they can achieve. It's really just their potential. And Heidegger would argue that the essence of existence lies in fulfilling these possibilities or reaching this potential. Let's use an analogy to break down this idea. Think back to your days in elementary school. Do you remember how often you were called unique? With all the sparkly stickers and prizes, you were probably convinced that you were some kind of special snowflake. Your teachers and parents constantly reinforced the idea that you were one of a kind, but they weren't doing it to inflate your self-esteem. From elementary school onwards, you would have to start making choices for yourself, choices that would consistently propel you towards new possibilities. Their behavior taught you to accept your individuality early on, and it kickstarted your quest to reach your full potential. Part 2. Falling and the Worldliness of the World The choices I previously mentioned, the choices you make every day, are not being made in a dreamland or some type of vacuum. They are being made in the real world, and Heidegger believed that this greatly influences the outcome. He said that the world has a worldliness to it, which is essentially the presence of others. This mass of humanity was often referred to as das man, which can translate to the one or the they. It is not the literal group of other people, but rather a powerful societal entity. Heidegger said this force exists everywhere, and that it offers judgments on everything by creating social norms. It allows individuals to dissolve into the whole, forcing them to forget their own needs and potentialities. When this happens, the individual is said to have fallen. Heidegger used this term to describe someone who follows public conscience instead of their own. Someone who has fallen only partly knows what things are because they are caught up in how others view them and how others label those things. Now let's go back to the school analogy to explain this concept. This time, think through all of your middle school memories. I know this might be a little painful, but just stick with me. Remember how concerned you were with being a cool kid? Maybe you bought a specific brand of clothes you didn't even like, or you played a sport that you absolutely hated just because your friends did, or because you thought it would make you fit in. This is a perfect example of the influence of Das Mann on individuality. You couldn't quite see the big picture yet, and you were stuck in your dramatic preteen world, all because you were focused on what others thought of you and how they labeled you. The middle school version of yourself was likely a fallen individual, according to Heidegger's standards. Sorry if that put a damper on the mood, but hey, at least you're in high school now. No more surprisingly existential middle school drama for you. I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to Heidegger's philosophies, and I really do hope that someday you reach your full potential. 